In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how I balance a full-time software engineering internship 40 hours a week at Shopify with part-time computer science classes at my university. Okay, first off, you need to start using a calendar. I don't know who you are, but I know that at least 50% of the people watching this video do not consistently use a calendar to time block and track your commitments. If you're someone who's already a calendar god, you can use the timestamps down below to skip ahead. But if you don't, as soon as you're done watching this video, you need to start using the calendar app on your phone. The Apple one is pretty good nowadays and Google Calendar is great as well. Using a calendar well is the scaffolding that really elevates every other time management principle in this video. At its core, all a calendar is, is a window into how you spend your time. Without one, people just have no idea what they do with their day. Imagine you're trying to save money, make a budget, cut down on your expenses, but you don't even know what you're spending. How are you supposed to get better at time management when at its core, you have no idea where you're spending your time? The best way to use a calendar is to literally put everything in it. Every event you have to go to, every class, every appointment, every hangout. Yes, that's the base level of using a calendar. It's ridiculous that more people aren't even doing this yet. Forget the rest of this video. If you have one takeaway, it's to put your planned events in your calendar. But the calendar pros, they also put in things they're planning to get done, even if it's not an external commitment. So if we look at my calendar, nearly every minute has something I'm intending to get done from the moment I wake up to the minute I fall asleep. And I do this every single day. Things like wake up, get ready, lunch break, dinner, lead code club. Most of these things are recurring events. So it's not like I'm typing waking up every single day. See, the advantage of this is that you're finally being intentional with your time. Even if you wake up the next morning and don't follow a minute of your schedule, at least you had an idea of what you wanted to do and when you wanted to do it. Honestly, on most days, I don't even follow my schedule exactly. Things inevitably come up. My toilet breaks, my goldfish swallows a Lego. Things always end up happening. But the thing is, and this is a secret here, even if stuff comes up, because you have all of your tasks blocked out, you now have to move that previous block to a different date and time. So you never end up forgetting to do things because at any given moment, that task has a time and date that it's going to get done, even if it's different from before. A calendar also means I'm almost never overwhelmed. Humans hate uncertainty. The most anxiety inducing situations are when you don't know what's going to happen. You don't have a plan. You don't know what you have to do and how you're going to do it. And then the anxiety comes. But because I have every single thing written down, why would I be worried or anxious? I know what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. I'm looking at it right now. There's no problems. So after this video, open your calendar app and ask yourself, when do you want to wake up every morning? When do you want to finish getting ready by? When are your classes, office hours? Put everything in your calendar. And then when you wake up tomorrow morning, there's no, hmm, I wonder what I should be doing today. No, that's bullshit. You know exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. Okay, before we get to the next helpful tips later in this video, follow me on Twitter. There I post software engineering memes and insights. Back to the video. My next step is kind of an extension of the last one, but it's to create recurring times and locations for specific commitments. The truth is that if you're working a full-time job, it's very difficult to do more than one thing every evening. You probably get done with work around 5 to 6 p.m. Then you have dinner, and if you're going to bed on time, you really only have one to two hours to dedicate to an external goal. This is why you should allocate all of your weekday evenings to specific things that you stick to every week. So for example, I have Lead Code Club every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. That's where I study for coding interviews and because it happens three times a week i'm consistently making progress towards that goal on tuesday and thursday evenings i spend my time working on computer science class stuff whether it's assignments going to office hours working on a project those evenings are dedicated towards classwork i even allocate specific locations on campus for those events lead code club is always in the same building in the same room at the same time the more regular you make those events the more likely you'll stick to them and the more of a habit it'll become also if you have in-person lectures you need to go to them even if they happen during the workday. So I have a lecture every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m., which is in the middle of my workday at Shopify. But I was able to talk to my manager and kind of extend my lunch break through that and work a little later on those days. This ensures I don't fall behind. I don't have to cram the night before the test. So even if the class is recorded, make an effort to go in person. So after you end up downloading your calendar and putting in all of your specific events, think about what side hustle, what skill do you want to devote your evenings to, and then lock them in the calendar. My next tip is, and keep watching till the end of the video because my next tips are even better than the previous ones. My next technique is the phrase, hell yes or no. Let me tell you a story. There was once a goat. Now this goat hadn't eaten or drank for days. He was thirsty and hungry as fuck. But eventually he found this beautiful pasture with a stream right nearby. But the problem was the goat couldn't decide what to do. He was hungry and thirsty, but he couldn't eat and drink at the same time. So he stood there for a few days, unable to commit to one thing, and he eventually died. Now the goat's mistake was not realizing that he could drink first and then eat 
afterwards and get the benefits of both. Can you see where I'm going with this? I have this problem and a lot of you guys probably do as well. We can't commit to doing one thing properly. We try to do a hundred things at once and end up doing none. It's so damn hard to let go of the 10 things that you want to do, but you know you can't. I think the ability to cleanly say no is an incredibly underrated time management skill. No, God, please, no, no. To help out with this, I strongly believe there's an exercise that everyone should do. Sit down, get a piece of paper or open a new note in your notes app and write down every single goal you have right now. What are you spending your time doing? What do you want to accomplish by the end of 2022? For me, I have my Shopify internship, my 1CS class, lead code, this YouTube channel, and the gym. Let me tell you, goddamn, even after cutting down to this list, these five things are still too much. Like, I know I'd be better the rest of them if I just cut out one or two, but yeah, I'm not perfect. I can't bring myself to give up any one of them. But a few months ago, I had a ton of extra things that I cut off this list. I was trying to get good at jujitsu, choir. I wanted to take dance classes, cooking classes. I wanted to learn how to skateboard to help me with surfing. I was planning on volunteering at the local high school next door. Yeah, it was pretty Pretty bad. And now that I've sat down and truly let go of these things, it's such a relief. After narrowing down your priority list to just four or five things, whenever you get a new opportunity, you have to honestly ask yourself, is it on this list or does it realistically help the goals on this list? If yes, then consider doing it. But if no, then you have to say hell no. And you can use this heuristic for social situations as well. Last year, I made a rule for myself where I will always say no to people asking me to hang out after 10 p.m. And at first, I had friends who would constantly ask me to go out, watch a movie, do things at 11, 12, 1 in the morning. But after saying no a bunch of times, people have just stopped inviting me to things that take place in the night or involve alcohol. And you know, it is a little bit sad that people have just stopped asking me to hang out in the night. But at the end of the day, what is more important? Committing to my goals and having the most productive time of the day available, the morning or going to one more event in the night that I probably won't remember 10 years from now. Yeah, I'm gonna pick my goals every time. My next tip is to outsource, outsource, outsource. If you have a job, that means you have money, which means you can spend your money to outsource menial tasks to save you time. Some things that I outsource are a laundry service. So those people will come once a week. They'll pick up my laundry, they'll wash it, fold it and return it. That saves me like an hour of time once a week. I have cleaning people that come every other week and mop the floor, clean the toilets, scrub the shower. This saves me minimum three to four hours of time. Plus, I hate cleaning the toilet, so there's that. Additionally, I have a part-time assistant in the Philippines. Shout out to Anthony. He really helps with travel planning. I do tend to travel a lot, so whenever I've confirmed dates for a location, I'll tell him to come up with a list of 10 to 20 things to do. Then I'll time block them, make the whole itinerary, call ahead to make reservations, and book tickets for all the events. This saves me another three to four hours minimum, and because salaries are so much lower in the Philippines, it doesn't really cost me much at all. Now, before we get into this last tip, drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. My last technique is to frequently use deadlines. Deadlines are a knowledge worker's best friend. I found that my greatest focus comes when I have an unavoidable deadline that I have to work towards. The most productive people create their own deadlines. They don't just follow other people's deadlines. Any Joe Schmo can just pull an all-nighter to turn an assignment in, but the true productivity masters will build systems to enforce that they complete their work on time. So, for example, I've signed up for this service called Beeminder that will charge me $30 if I don't post this YouTube video on time. This is a fake deadline that forces me to get shit done. You can even check out my Beeminder graph at beeminder.com slash if you want to see how many times I've f***ed up and paid them. People think I'm insane when I tell them I pay a random company to keep me in line, but it works and that automated accountability is worth the money. Beeminder is so effective, let me tell you. I have friends who complain to me that they can't follow their goals, consistency is too hard, and then I'm like, hey, just sign up to Beeminder and put your money where your mouth is. No problem. And then they get all uncomfortable and quiet. And it's because they know if B minor is keeping you in check, you actually have to perform. And they don't care enough about their goals to fully and utterly enforce them at all costs. Other than monetary incentives, there are other ways to enforce your deadlines. Another one is social pressure. I started a lead code club at my university after I realized I was struggling to get through practice problems on my own. This club meets three times a week, and because we have regular problem sets, it forces me to actually do the work on a timely basis. There are times where I don't finish last week's problems during the session, and because we need to keep moving forward, it forces me to finish them on my own so I can move on in the next session to the next topic. So yeah, two great ways to create deadlines, money, and social pressure. If you like this video, watch this video right here. These are six more time management principles that I used back when I was a full-time computer science student. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.